What's up, everybody? It's Brand Man Sean. And it's Lady J Bookums. And we're back with the third episode of our podcast. We decided we wanted to keep doing this thing for sure. We know y'all like the feedback um, from the first few episodes. However, we've been asking y'all for a name. We've been looking for help with a name. Right. And guess what? We figured it out. We, we have a name for y'all, and I know some people don't really like to tap it on the desk, but this time it's going to make sense. So without further ado, <laughs> <laughs> Music Mavericks Podcast. Now, thank you for some of the inspiration that y'all gave us, all right. the names that y'all gave us. We soaked it in, and this is our output, so even if it's not the thing that you recommended, it was inspired through some of those recommendations. Right. And we got some interesting topics for you guys. But before we get into that, I'll say it like this. Like, music is obvious. We're music. But Maverick, representing the independent thinking, just independent in general, I think obviously that speaks to so many other things that you guys stand for. Independent artists working up, doing y'all things, and all of us just being independent and thinking. Because I always say, hey, let's not just think different. Let's move different. So that's what we're all about. Topic number one, Lady J is going to cue it up because she always is great <laughs> with the topics. So w- w- what do we have here? Okay, so uh, because it's holiday time, right? I right. figured that we would talk about, you know, artists coming up for the holiday. How can artists really cap for the holidays? Because, you how know, I would... How can you cap? Because, listen, it's it's a lot going on in the holidays, and I feel like independent artists can really take advantage of it. Um, you know, I was literally having a conversation with somebody, and they were basically saying, like, you know, should I release new music during the holiday time? Because mm-hmm. they say that they had somebody told them that for independent artists, it's not really a good time to try to release music because, it, you know, basically it's just saturated with a lot of major artists or, or any company for that matter, just already running ads and pushing stuff to people. So they think, like, that's not the best time for artists. So that's what we're going to talk about. Is the holidays a good time for you to release, you know, a new campaign, new music, new merch, any of that? What do you think before I tell you what I think? I mean, I'm going to tell you straight up, it's a great time to me. That's Okay, that's what I was going to say. (laughs) Nah, you copycat. You shouldn't (laughs) let me go first. You shouldn't let me go first. I think it's hard for me to find a bad time. Maybe specifically for an artist because you might have something going on or you just drop something and you or your resources. It might be specific to you, but for me in general, it's hard to have a bad time to release music. And we can get into that why, but I want to see why you agree that it should be uh, Listen, that you should drop music. First of all, I feel like one thing about the holidays, you know, especially this time of the year when Thanksgiving, Christmas time, you know, people are already ready to buy, right? Everybody is ready. Black Friday sales, Cyber Monday, mm-hmm. Christmas, mm-hmm. you know, all it's like everybody in the world is ready for the sale. Everybody got their cards out. It's time to buy something for the husband, the wife, the mistress, whoever, mm-hmm. baby daddy, <laughs> anybody, right? Everybody's already in the mood to buy stuff or to find something new. Right. Yeah, what? I'm sorry. Yeah, walk a You got a mystery. That's a fact, right? So everybody's already ready to buy stuff. So it's like this is the perfect time to have something for them to buy, you know? But I think the thing is, the main thing is that uh, artists have to understand during the holidays, and this might be a reason why people say it's not a good time for artists, During the holidays, it's best if you have an audience to sell to because it's going to be hard to try to reach a cold audience when you're trying to drop new music, right? It's like people are not going to buy something new that they never heard of on Christmas. Like they're looking for the special of something that they already wanted. I disagree with you. All right, tell me why. I think people will buy plenty of things that they have never heard of on a holiday, especially if it makes sense. Has a good deal. All right, so here's this one thing that look y'all need to hear about. Bose has these sunglasses uh-huh. that have speakers on the side. Right? Uh-huh. It's the craziest thing. If you have not seen these things, not used these things, go to Best Buy. I don't know how they're like staying so underground right now, but trust me, you gonna see me walking up in here. You be like, dang, let me get one. Okay. So like, you hear about something that's cool enough during a time of year when you have more disposable income. Most people, they're they either have more disposable income because they're getting gifts and stuff at this time of year, or they have um, more disposable. Well, they're more in a buyer mindset right. because of what's going on this year. So I think hearing something 
And seeing something that's desirable that you didn't know about will actually make people want to do, um, like, this is a good time to do that. The only thing, though, specific to artists, yes, I feel like I agree with you. Right, right? because so that's, I, was, it's not I, was, about, I was about to hit you that's with not, the Ram that's, Bam. That's, that's not buying, thing. though. But that's not buying, because that's not even, so right now, holidays, you have disposable music. I mean, you have disposable money and more disposable time. Right, most of these people are sitting at home. You know, kids are off school, like people right. on vacations. But but it's hard. But you're now you're spending that on stuff that you usually have seen. But you still yeah. like there's there's still some. I don't know. There. You can go back and forth because what you just said, like disposable time, right? Some people do have that disposable time during the holidays, but at the same time, everybody or every brand, no matter what it is that they love, is like taking over with their advertisement, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, while you're on those down times, first of all, if you're searching on your phone, everything that you search during the year is going to pop up as you're scrolling on Facebook, on Instagram, right? So you're already going to be, like, blown away with all the people that you recognize. So when you're scrolling and you might see an ad come down from an artist that you never heard of before, it's very likely that you're going to keep scrolling. But I put that back on the creative because right, okay. people don't tend to actually create creative, creative. You, you, you can, as an artist, you consider yourself creative, but when it comes to these ads, they're typically not creative. Right, they're right? they're like, very basic. Yeah, so then that's the problem. Where okay, yeah, you just push a single that has a a, a logo or yeah. a song title. Nah, you can't expect that. You have to still engulf people into your world and still gain people's attention and earn it. That needs to go for any time of year, but even more so during the holidays. But let, let's switch to a marketer standpoint, though. Why right, because I had, I had something right? to say about that. All go right. ahead. Like, why it's good. I'm going to tell you why it's bad. Is, um, to market during this time is this, right? People are making every excuse in the world to market, right? It used to be Black Friday. Oh, yeah. Now they do Cyber Sunday. And then now they have pre, well, like Black Friday start inching into Thanksgiving. Right. Now some of these places might as well not consider themselves closed because they open at 2 p.m. <laughs> in the day. And then my dad put me on to the fact that people have like pre-Black Friday sales that yes. we saw this year, like going two weeks before Black Friday. Markers are, are always going to ruin everything. You give them more shots, they always going to figure out a, a, a reason to get in front so of you. So you got to stay up on it. And there's a lot of those ex reasons and excuses that are just organic at this time of year. So yes, there's a lot more attention being grabbed, a lot more emails and things like that. But because of that, you trying harder and even doing more of that isn't going to bother people as much either. Right. Now, I'm not going to say it's not going to bother them, but it, but they might pass it by. And the reason why I say, like, for independent artists, uh, you know, marketing to that cold audience is not the best idea because, A, it takes more money, especially we're talking about ads. It's going to take you way more money to market to some to to a new target, right, or, or to your cold audience than it is to remarket or retarget people that you've already built up the fan base with, you know, you already kind of got a custom target and you can just, yeah. you can sell. So when okay. it, and then, so when it comes to the holiday times, first of all, the, the price of running ads and all of that, the cost goes up anyway. Always. Yeah. So, so that means you're going to be paying that price plus a higher price to try to get to somebody new. So that's why I say one thing about uh, marketing to in during the holidays what you should be doing on the off holidays is really building up your fan base because when the holiday times come, you can literally market straight to them, which will cut down a lot of the cost of you trying to reach new people. So that's why I say it's like it's better for you to be promoting to your warm or hot audience during the holidays so you can so you keep your cost down and mm -hmm. and then put your content out to people who actually want it. You know what I mean? That is incredibly true, Lady J. Thank you. However. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, that's the most ideal situation. And we want the ideal situation, but We go ahead. want the most ideal situation, but the reality of this thing, this thing, which I feel like most artists really need to get themselves out of this mentality, mm -hmm. is waiting for perfect conditions. If you want to consider yourself an entrepreneur, you really want to consider yourself an, an artist who has to go this indie route, there's going to be a lot of things that happen and a lot of windows that open where there's perfect conditions for that window and all the other stuff that would have been nice to be prepared for it is out has to be done with because you can't there is no time this window will not come again right now that's different for the holiday days in general of course plan to do what lady j says because we know this is coming next year if you just five years in a row and you aren't prepared for the holidays then look that's on you right however 
I'll start to think, what's it, what? how can I win in a situation? We know there's not the most ideal conditions, but what can I do with the resources I have? What is my goal? And how can I go about that? So when I think about ads in general, yes, ads in terms of programmatic ads, Facebook, you know, television, whatever, any type of programmatic ad, digital or terrestrial will definitely go up during this time because it's just an auction based system. Right. What you'll see less of go up is in, in platforms and spaces where we're thinking about some influencer marketing that won't go up as much um, because it's not as contextual and they're not being inundated as much. And then also when you look at platforms like playlisting for Spotify. Mm. That's not built on the exact same market space system because a lot of those playlists aren't thinking that way. Oh, holidays, right. I'm going to go up for a period and then go up down, go back down. They don't mm-hmm. even want to risk going up because they might lose themselves. They're just like, ooh, I got a lot of money coming in. Right. And, then, and that's it. So now I might invest heavily considering the fact that there's a market that has disposable time on its hands and they're probably going to be listening to their favorite artist Meaning, I need to find some of their favorite artists and get next to them if it makes sense with who I am. Right. Put some money in that playlist because it's going to be about the same. And then, because they have more time, if my music isn't trash, they're going to be even more willing to look look at it. And then, if it's good enough, that first introduction, I'll be more willing to check on to, um, into the rest of their stuff. Right. So this is the thing. So so now with knowing like this, this is what could go wrong because we know like things are pricey and blah, blah, blah. So it might be a risk, but you still take that risk and you can look into other things. So what I would, what I want to shift to is how to start getting prepared for all of this. So knowing like what's happening, you can actually like plan to get around that. So what I would suggest for artists before the holidays even come, I would say like we're we're about to get back into first quarter, right? We're about to hit January, so I would suggest for you guys to start creating a list of all of the holidays throughout the year, right? Like all of the major holidays, right. you know, New Year's, uh, Valentine's Day, Memorial Day. All the rest of them, right? <laughs> Make a whole list. I'm not a holiday person. And, and then your birthday. Your birthday is a holiday because that, that's a great time to, like, market your True. birthday. You know, people going to buy stuff from you just because you say it's your birthday, you know? Mm-hmm. But anyway, make a long list of all of the major holidays, right? And then start uh, creating your little campaigns around that because this is the perfect time to be like, okay, well, I know Christmas is coming in a couple months. First of all, I can go ahead and create me a little Christmas project, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I create me a little uh, Jingle Bell EP or something and then create my merch to go with it. To be clear, though, please understand that just because it's the holidays and that tradition of Christmas and that type of music... Understand that you don't have to create Christmas, Christmas music. song, right? Like Fabulous has always dropped. Matter of fact, it's a summertime series. I, what's, I forgot the name of the mixtape, but it's like it ha- the summer is in the name, and he drops it every winter during that time, and people will expect it and they look for it. And he might have skipped a year every once in a while, but he has like. But it's very months. consistent. It, it, I know it, what you're it, talking it's, about. It's very consistent, and it's not that vibe. And we all know. Well, everybody might not know this, but. There's always like a scary movie that comes out during like the holidays, like Christmas for some reason. Mm. And it's not like, oh, it's a Christmas themed scary movie. It's just a scary movie. So you can prime people to be ready for whatever. Right. So the, so the idea is just to start getting ready, right? Yes. Write the list and then start building your assets of what you're going to need during that promotional period. So, you know, uh, your assets is going to be like, you you want to create your email list. So we know during the holidays, we get like a whole bunch more of emails from these different companies than normal, right? So you're going to want to make sure you write out your emails in advance. So when, it, when the holiday comes, you just... Schedule like them write. to blast off. Really? Yeah, like literally type all your emails oh, up. No, you said right. Well, I just wanted to be okay. sure that type. you have some method. Yeah, like, okay, I don't type. What the writing people say when you write stuff down, you remember it better and then you connect. No, 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 no. Like, so you actually want to have an email service provider. Okay. So whether you're using MailChimp, um, I use, uh, what do I use? Drip? AWeber? No. Uh, ConvertKit. I'm oh, sorry, ConvertKit, because y'all my dogs. But I use... Hold Conver- on, you getting, getting a little affiliate over there? Uh, yes, I do. Hey, okay. Uh, <laughs> put the link. Check it out. And, you know, we're going to put it in the description. Right. So, yeah, I use ConvertKit. But whatever your email service provider that you want to use, you want to basically go and uh, set up 
um, a list of like different emails that are going to blast out to your audience. So it's going to be that, yo, the holidays is coming. Like this is going to be on sale. And then you have your coupon and whatever, however you want to do it. You can kick like three to five uh, emails. Um, a lot of people do way more than that. And if you notice, like during the holidays, you probably get like three or four emails a day from one company. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on how much you want to go. And don't for be real, scared. Listen. Let them know, cause my email, my listen, my inbox is looking real brazy right now. But, but don't be scared to do that because this is something that is typical. It's just typical. Like move how the companies do. But this is something. This is what we call an asset. You want to get all your emails together and schedule them to just blast out to your audience, right? So you want to have that. You want to have all of your imagery together. So if you have any type of flyers, banners, all of this stuff, you want to make sure that you're creating all of that. And then all of that is, uh, you put that on all of your social media, get all your banners, make sure everything is just looking cohesive or whatever. Corey sent, like, he he posted something, like, yesterday that speaks to this. I'm going to find it for the end of this conversation. But, all right. Keep this in mind, all right? You're talking about all that stuff. I want you to talk more time because what I've noticed, right? First, I would just be giving advice to artists or trying to, you know, tell them what they should do, the methods and tactics, certain things like that, right? Then, as I spent more and more time with, like, artists that are fresher in the game, I was like, oh, man, okay, they understand that they're supposed to do this now, but they don't understand that you need to be doing this for six months, right? To even understand, to actually see real results. You're trying these one-off tactics, but you're not trying strategy. You're just giving me a call one time. You need to call me five to 10 uh, 10 times or something like that. But then after that, I realized the next stage, which I need to talk about even more, is they don't realize how much time beforehand it takes to prepare for this stuff. Like you, some of these things, why y'all are getting at it, disadvantage is because people are literally preparing like six months in advance yeah. three months in advance and then they're launching they have all this stuff built up and you're thinking that oh i'm just gonna like get something together this weekend and artists say i took advantage of a holiday i can't tell you how often i see artists say oh i'm, I'm dropping something on valentine's day or i'm dropping something on my birthday or dropping and it is literally just a drop maybe a few pictures that go along with it right but, but it's not like a campaign run exactly you have to make a moment out of it and decide where it's focused and continuous so you absorb that traffic you ab- you suffocate the marketplace into your own space and world for a period of time and then you can move past that but it takes Building out emails that like because you you need to do templates and you need to be dripping those campaigns that takes time to write those right. out and do them efficient. The landing pages, the 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 music the ad itself, copies, the ad copy, the, and the uh, what else? photos, photos, graphics, actual music videos, all that stuff. The, right, the, the, lining up the platforms to promote it. All these things take time to curate and even more time if you're working by yourself. So like. Please understand that not only are we saying do this, we're saying you need to do this for five to six months sometimes or an extended period of time longer than just two days. Right. right? And then not only that, but you need to prepare to do this for probably months for a lot of y'all. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's that's why you want to start out. But by just writing down the list of holidays so you can visually see what you have coming up and then you can pick which which holidays you want to actually like campaign for or campaign during that time. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, when it comes to like the time to take, to prepare that now, one thing it, it depends on, like, do you have a team that's helping you with this? If you're doing it by yourself, you know, you might want to plan for a holiday four months in advance, at least two, you know, definitely don't do it the month before or the, the month of, because it's, it's just going to wear you out and you're going to fall behind, but you definitely want to give yourself like three to four months in advance to plan for a holiday. And that's why you start with that list and then you start to create your your holiday calendar or your campaign calendar, right? So it says during this week, I'm going to be creating all of my emails and scheduling them. During this week, I'm going to be creating all of the imagery that I need. So any type of flyers, any type of... um, uh, Just any type of image that you need to go along with you promoting or marketing right so you you're going to be doing that uh you might need to have any some type of promo video so one thing that i talked about with um with my 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 group uh my coaching group is the fact that we don't always have to shoot full videos 
for your single. So let's say you're mm-hmm. you have something yep. that you're planning to do for Christmas, you know, but you don't have a yep. full single or a full video for it. You don't have to shoot full videos. You can literally take like 60 seconds of that song and shoot a, a promo video, right? I would say take this 60 seconds of like the dopest part of the song, shoot the, shoot a promo video that's actually like acting out certain things that you're saying, right? Yep. So it looks like so dope. It's, it's basically like you're telling the stories, like B-roll footage, why you rapping at the same time or whatever. But you want to create those little 60-second promo videos that you can use. You can use those for ads. You can use those just for content to promote. You can put links to stuff in your uh, your email list, all of that stuff, right? So you just want to create. Those are all your assets. You have to get all of that stuff together, you know, way before you. it's time to even launch. And then you can do stuff like a pre-sale. So you tell people maybe like two weeks before like yo there here's the pre-sale you're gonna get like 50 percent off and then when it comes time for the holiday you might be like okay here's a 30 percent off and here's so a th- you, you're hitting them with a lot right man now. because it you're, is a you're, lot you're hitting them with a lot it's a lot right and i i want one thing that y'all take away from everything she said is that she said a lot <laughs> which means it's gonna take a lot of time on the front end to, to plan that out because everything she said was facts there's some version of that 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 you should be applying, even when we talk about looking at holidays ahead of time, right? And being able to map that out, it's not just holidays. Looking at dates in general, whatever, planning something far enough ahead is a real thing that needs to be utilized more. And I, the artists that I know and I'm working with um, on the back end are just helping out in general that are doing that, I see a difference in the ones that say, hey, you know, brand man, can I do this? And I'm like, okay, yeah, but when are you going to drop it? And uh, I'm trying to drop it in two weeks, and I got these and these are my resources, yeah. and it's not prepared, versus, yo, I'm dropping this in January, but we've been talking about this since June, where it's almost having me like, yo, bro, shit, it's kind of early to be talking about this, right? But, it, but, it's, <laughs> but, it's, but not. it's relevant, and they're on their stuff. And I appreciate it, because you have to be the one who's on your stuff and, and looking at it that way, because, you know, one artist... I remember he had some stuff he wanted to start in January. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it literally since June, July, probably July. And then he all has a goal of when he starts that, what he wants to do on New Year's Day, 2020, technically it'll be 2021. Whatever, you know know what I mean, right? Right. So he's really planning the next year starting six months into the year prior. Right. Right? And that's a campaign, like, or or a marketing strategy, a marketing plan. Like, you want to have a release plan, Especially when you don't have many resources. You need to really gather how you want to spend your resources and plan for it. That way things get used in an interconnected way versus I spend it and now every other thing I do is starting from ground zero. You want to make sure these things connect. Sometimes it gets you one step forward. Sometimes it gets you five steps forward. Right. But they need to connect. But what, like one thing I feel like when it comes to the holidays that's important to understand is that um, it's it's great for artists to use, like have a per, have a reason to do something that because it gives other people a reason to want to tune into you, right? So it's like I can drop something for the the cr- Christmas season and use the fact of just it being Christmas, like I'm doing this because it's Christmas to get people's attention, right? So yep. that's why it's good for you to like really look at certain holidays, not even just holidays, but this can go into like you looking into festivals, like, okay, I want to release my music. Let me see when the music conferences are going on or music yep. festivals because I can just cap off of them. I can say, okay, every year South by Southwest is happening. I can plan a whole project or a whole single, two singles or whatever, to drop during South by Southwest and then go and attack all the people who are having shows during South by Southwest, right? Exactly. And get on. And then I can use that. I'm on stage like, boom, this is my new single. And I can just use them to help promote me. Because if you're on somebody's show, they're going to have flyers for you. They're going to be doing recap videos. You know what I mean? And this is what you're going to be able to use. Like all of that content, you're going to be able to use that for your own benefit. Yeah, and what you're alluding to now is the fact that one we have permission marketing and some of y'all are familiar with that right where we get into this vibe where where, hey we give to people and people are actually open to hearing it whether we're giving advice right and they're open to it or or they're just a fan so they're open to you pushing something out to them Mm -hmm. they're giving you permission to to get back in front of their face right? right but then we have this other level where there's these events and when you can justify around the event 
then it's permissible. Maybe they're not saying permission, but you're justified. It's like, okay, he's doing it because of this. He created right. a reason. That's why Marcus is like, oh, it's, it's Black Friday? Oh, it's pre-Black Friday. It's Cyber Monday, right? It's the pre-pre-party, you know, the after-after <laughs> right. after party, right? We create all these things. And then it's pretty much another level when we look at concentrated periods like the holidays that are marketers heaven, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's permission spamming. That's really what it is. Right. I haven't heard nobody say that before. I think I just coined something. Right you there. might have. So y'all might, y'all get, Permission y'all, give me, scamming. Give me a check. Not scamming. Uh, Ooh. Spamming. <laughs> <laughs> we, know, we, we already know what you be up to on the... My bad. My bad. My after bad. the pod, we already know where you're going. I uh, nah, nah. shot. But check, that. <laughs> but check this out, though. Corey hit me back. Uh, shout out to Corey the Savior. Adding content from the pod, to the podcast from afar. Because mm. he posted this on the... Um, what did he say? On his story. Nah, um, he posted this on the story and a guy. So this is Black Wealth Renaissance. I wish I could like share it on the screen as I go because I'm not doing post production on that. But um, the future will have it. We'll have it. <laughs> but check this out. This guy Marco at Saint D I C. I whatever down. That's okay. what am I doing? I made millions during the holidays. Most don't realize it's the only time of the year where it's okay for brands to break most of the rules. A few of my favorite tips slash strategies. Facebook ad frequency. Throw it out the window. It doesn't matter during the holidays. If return on ad spend is solid, keep the ads running. I've had campaigns smashing at 15 at a frequency of 15. This will happen in campaigns with customers slash site traffic. Let it fly to return on ad spend tanks. He's saying ROS, that's return on ad spend. So let me explain this part to y'all before I go to the next thing he said. So Facebook ad frequency, that's essentially how many times the ad shows to an individual, right? Mm. So typically it's advised around two to three. You don't really keep that ad running. You, You need to kind of adjust it, right? But he's saying it can go up to 15. That means this individual person has seen this thing 15 times and they just keep seeing it, seeing it, seeing it. But you need to keep it running in this particular period. However, I like that he has that caveat if the return on ad spend is there. So that means if it's showing to a lot of people, but you're still making money, it doesn't matter. Right. Don't worry about it, which I would almost really sh- not care and break the rules anyway and like and do that at any other time of the year now that I think exactly. about it. But typically people really look at that um, frequency and say, nah, that's, that's getting high. I don't want to annoy people. I almost feel like a lot of times if I'm not annoying people, it's not, right. it's not getting mean, the results. You should, your stuff should be in people's face all the time. But when people are doing this with everybody, it doesn't have the same effect because right. they're just saying, ah, like it, it's, it's, they don't have one person to single out. You don't really take that bullet and it, it, you're drowned out in the crowd. Right, that and way. they won't unsubscribe. They won't necessarily unsubscribe because before they get a chance to, they get hit with another email from somebody else. And, you know, it's more like duck, duck, goose. They they might get somebody, but likely you, maybe not, probably not. So uh, I'll keep reading because he, he has, I, I love the fact there's a perspective, a strong perspective, and it sounds like it comes from his opinion. We can talk about if there's some parts that we disagree with or not. But, yeah. Um, social media posting frequency. Post high quality content five to ten times per day oh. per channel. Whoa. Everyone is posting at an insane amount of content and you should too. That sounds like some Gary V type stuff. Uh, I'm going to say no. Why, why would you say no to that? I'm a, now, I'm going to say, like, first of all, I think it depends on, like, your followers or your, your followers. following. You know, like, and your personal system. Do you even have the ability? Yeah, to like, because me, you're not going to catch me posting no five times a day. I don't even post twice a day, you know? <laughs> or, or if I post multiple times, it's going to be a combination of, like, me posting once on my insta feed and mm-hmm. then me posting multiple times on my insta story mm-hmm. you know what i mean which is way easier for me to do but i'm you definitely not about to catch me posting like why though hey because i just i don't have the time not even that i don't have the time i don't feel like it's necessary like i have a strong following you know i think my followers are used to me posting the way that i do like if i go a couple days without posting i'll literally get uh, DMs like yo are you good like everything good but they know posting once a day like they know that's what I, I do sometimes you gotta shake shit up though 
Listen, like, it's... Oh, y'all used to this? All right, it's time to grow. I might need to shake some of y'all out. Y'all are passive followers. That's cool, too. Some of y'all are people are with me, but y'all aren't really benefiting to my progress where I need to go in life. Ain't that what y'all say when y'all get into one of those zones? No. I gotta take care of me. <laughs> Self-love. First of all, right? who is y'all? Who's gonna go with me on the journey? <laughs> Somebody gots to go, right? Like, sometimes you gotta, you gotta, like, especially when you have something big that you want to push to the next level. In the same way where most artists have these first level fans, right? Those are the early movers. But you have to realize a part of the early mover mindset, their identity is being an early mover. So some of these people literally, no matter how much you stay the same, if you get accepted commercially, they won't like you the same because you don't belong to them and they, and it doesn't align with their identity of being different and being the first. So they're by nature going to move on to the first, right? To another person that they could be first on to. So those type of people keep you from even being able to move forward. You can't worry about some fans. So some fans, just like they say about people, you know, some fans are just for a season. They, they, they bring right. you up to the, to the next level and it's cool. You're not, but you know, it's, it's one thing if you're switching up who you are, but if you're doing things that allude to progress and I'm saying this, this is all metaphorical life sounding, but really in the same for an ad campaign and launch sometimes, and sometimes you got to remind people that you exist and you also got to show people that there's another level for you and find new fans because no matter what people give you a certain amount of time right if they're they can tune into lady j they can tune into drake they can tune into to to jay-z see i put you in the name yeah uh, my, you know my, my dog my dog my dog but they can tune into all these people right but for a period of time people also take their breaks Right? right. So just like you watch a TV show, you catch up with every episode, but then you might take a break. And it doesn't even mean that you don't dislike the TV show. But while you're taking your break, you as the TV show still need to get your following and your ad dollars. Yeah. So you have to survive without it. So you always have to be looking for new But this fans. is the thing, what you said about like the ads, because I feel like, first of all, when it comes to like he's saying, like, you know, post these many times, that means that, you know, posting that many times based on that sell content because one thing I don't like to do is is overly sell right mm -hmm. and I think I've built up a platform where I don't have to keep telling my followers like go buy this go go purchase this you know I can drop the value and then people will just go to my link and click and see like okay what does she do what does she offer and then you'll see all the things that I actually charge for so I think that's one reason why I love ads because ads allow me to put that message out saying buy this, you know, to everybody, everybody who already follows me, everybody who else that's in the target, you know, it puts that content out on a daily basis. So I don't have to keep saying every day, like, yo, I got this event. I got this event. I got this event every day because people get tired of being like, well, dang, like what else do you got? You know what I mean? Cause people get, get tired of being, I'm the opposite. I, yeah, I don't, I don't, what else do you got? Nothing. This all I got. Nah, right but now. but see, that's why I feel like like ads help you do that, you know, mm -hmm. because and I and I just think like it just depends on your following. Once again, like I don't I don't necessarily. And then if you like, even when you think about the the bigger people like these Gary V's and all of that, like he's not on his page telling you to buy something from him every day. Oh, people yeah, no. buy into him, yeah, right. you know, because they just understand that he knows what he's talking about, and then they right, understand right. like what industry he's in. And if you're tr trying to be a part of that industry or whatever, you're just gonna start seeking like what it what does he have? Does he have a conference I can pop up at? Like he doesn't have to tell you every day to buy from him. All right, you're talking about buy. Okay, I get that from sales content. If your sales content is strictly buy 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 so i have levels of sales content when it comes to artists or anything in business right some things are indirect they're soft sale just to create awareness some things are hey go get this this is the information you need you need to get it now and then some things are just like it has nothing to do with the sales right but then there's certain times where there's certain periods like i'm about to something that's really important to me and that i want people to to have um which is this this tiktok content that i'm about to be putting putting out I'm going to be extremely honed in and focused on that like nothing else exists for a period of right. time, for about probably two But this months. is the thing. You don't, even with doing that, okay, there's a way to do that. So even an artist that's, okay, if he's saying like, uh, blast like five posts a day, right? So your posts, those five posts are like, uh, array of things. It's not saying go check out my song. It might be you like in the studio, like a behind the scenes performance yeah, video. Like it might be you doing other things that allude to like I have this new single, right? 100%. You know what I mean? But I just want to make sure people stay 
comfortable with selling or get comfortable with selling. Right, right. But you got to learn day, how. Someone who isn't going to buy is not going to buy. That's a fact. And if they will buy, they will buy. And that means will and buy. When I say buy, that's interchangeably interchanged with any version of convert. Whether that means watch, listen, you know what I mean? Give them your email, whatever it is. You have to get used to all those no's, all those people who start oh, to say, look, he's sending, I'm seeing him too much. Because there's artists that you probably felt that way about for. You hear, you're hearing him too much, you're seeing him, and why mm-hmm. do people even like that person? You're going to get all that. That's a part of the process, and that's one of the things where I... Um, I like to do my periods where I'm going to focus in and push myself in front of people about something specific, no matter what it is, whether I'm pushing somebody else or I'm pushing me for a period of time, because I always have to remind people, look, I talk about this, but I actually do these things. I don't care what people are saying. If it gets to my goal, because it's not about work, working on what's on the front end. It's like, what are the results on the back end? Those people who are going to feel how they feel are going to feel that way. And that's just how I feel. And that's what right. I've, I've seen. Of course, being cognizant and not necessarily taking advantage of it where I'm just going to say everything is a salesman. I, I hate that stuff. But making sure you provide value is like, OK, bam, they hit me with a listen to this now. Bam, they hit me with a different listen to this now because they just showed me a snippet of the right. video. So you got to you know, understand like, what kind of content, you know, it's so a variety. you have to I've have a variety of yeah. content when you're when you're posting a lot like that. You know, so if somebody says like, yo, you need to be posting five times a day, your next question is, okay, so what do I need to post? Like, what kind of content do I need to post? That's, Which about, is, that's extremely valid. Right. I'm glad you, you, you talked uh, talk right. in on that. Which is, which is another reason why you take that time to plan for these ahead of time. So you understand, what, well, like I said, right, your let's asset. Give, let's give a quick example so people can have a, a, a takeaway from that specific content. So, like, just off the top, what I would think, might be content buckets. So, well, of course, we got the buckets. We'll let, I'll let you go deep onto the buckets. I'm just going to say specific types of, all right, bam, I might be dropping a single that might have the album artwork, and that's alluding back to the single. Right. I might drop a 30-second uh, snippet of the music video, if I have a music video, mm-hmm. and bam, that's another piece of content. I might drop a 30-second of the last in uh, last 30 seconds. That's another piece of content. A little lyric I, video. Yeah, might be a, a lyric video. You've seen the same content in different ways, e- even in between that. That's I might, the key. I might just, yeah, you have to, it's variety is the key. Right. I always said that variety is the key to spam because you at least have to put in the effort to entertain people. So maybe behind the scenes, maybe in between that, it is something that has nothing to do with the single at all, like one or two of those, because now it's like, oh, he keep pushing me with the single, he's pushing with, with me with this single, and I'm about to push this unfollow, and then next thing you know, dang, he made me laugh. That is why I right. like you, you know what I mean? But it side note, you don't, so, okay, when we talk about even creating that much content, right, five pieces of content, that doesn't mean that you have to put five pieces of content on one platform, though. Yes, I right? was thinking about that earlier. Because, like, even though I might, if I have a sale going, I might post a little something on Instagram, but, like, my, I have an email list. So my email list is getting pumped to, like, y'all getting it. If you on my email list, you're getting you it right see, now. You see how she is <laughs> behind closed doors. She <laughs> acting like, oh, I want to post so much. Like, but, but see, the difference is your email list, people opted in and said, I'm giving you permission to sell to me. I'm giving you, like, I'm opting in to you and what you do. It's between that and a follow to you. Well, f- Follow, I feel like people will follow you for multiple reasons. People get on your email list. You have an email list for a specific reason. like, And then you may have multiple email lists, but people opt into that specific email list for, you know, whatever they first initially saw from you. You know what I mean? So if you opt into my email list, let's say I did a webinar, you know, and you was like, yo, I want to jump on her webinar. You already know, like, that's saying, like, I want this type of information. I want to learn more about this. So when it comes for me, when it comes time for me to sell to you about this, you're already open for it. You yeah, know what I mean? 100%. That's one reason why emails are e- collecting emails are is such a valuable thing. Like that's just like the permission to print money. I think one of my mentors said that. That wasn't me, right. but <laughs> I think it's Jeff Walker. He wrote a book called Launch. You know about launching. You know your company, your businesses, whatever. So he he specifically went into like why emails emails are so important because people are basically giving you permission to sell to them period like everybody on instagram people might have followed me because you know they might have seen me on your page and was like oh i seen sean talk brand man sean talking to her so let me go follow (laughs) facts though but like people are followers so people follow they you know monkey see monkey do i think 
So what's important what you said is context. And so whenever I say stuff, sometimes I um, I remember Corey said this to me uh, about I think he said Circle said this to him about cursing knowledge where you know something and you don't un- know that people don't know it when you say it or you right. don't mention it or explain it. So there's always context and stuff that I'm talking about. So and I just might not know or think to say it. Yeah. When you talked about the email list, right? And that's more about I follow for a specific reason versus the Instagram. They might be following you. They're opting into you versus opting into a specific thing about you. Right. Right. And I want to ref- uh, allude back to what this guy said because you, that's a great point. You can post on all these different networks, but he was specifically said five post her channel, which is a lot. Boy. I get it. But another thing to consider, not only just posting in other platforms you own, but I'm always thinking about fan base growth. You have to figure out how to keep growing. And yes, you don't want to none nature fans and, and like just keep posting. And you don't want to also just keep pushing the same creative to those people. And sometimes you don't have the resource to create more. So what that has to look like is I push to these people, right? On this channel, but I still have all these other channels. I get shout outs on these pages or I, or I take this post and I get it posted on five other channels. So it's still not feeling like it's just coming from me. Right. And th- there's so many different versions of that leveraging other channels that are borrowed. So you have owned and borrowed. So what can you how many can you borrow? So many artists that are just mysterious. Right? Basically, what they do is borrow channels. Most of their marketing comes from getting other people or an illusion of other people mm-hmm. on other platforms talking about them versus them talking about themselves because then that would take away their version of the mystery. Right. So, like, really keep that in mind. I want to see what else, because this, this guy has definitely had some talking points for us to talk, <laughs> to talk about. All right, fake sellout. Fake sellout. Of oh, fake sell out of stock, then reintroduce it a few days later, create scarcity. Yeah, that's always we always talk about creating scarcity whenever you can. Um, and sometimes you know, it's even better when it's real. Sometimes, well, not I wouldn't call it better, but sometimes you have to realize if it actually happens, it's not a bad thing if right. you can understand how to flip that opportunity and to make the most out of it. So, f- just to be clear, that's basically putting a time limit on whatever your sale is or whatever, you know, you're yeah. putting out. Tell people like, yo, you got two days to get this exactly. and that's it. And honor it. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, let me see. Now, this probably is less relevant. But I'll read it just in case some of y'all are on the merch part and things like that. Clearly spell out your Christmas shipping cutoff. Well, that's okay. That's the time limit. Mm-hmm. Post on IG, Facebook, and all your other brands' homepages. Customers want to be guaranteed that their gift will be there in time for Christmas. So let them know when you're going to send it out. Post holiday loyalty program. Now, this is interesting. It says most people get some money as a holiday gift. So make it easy for them to spend it on your brand. I like how that sounds. I'm going to make it easy for you <laughs> right. to give me your money. That's, um, that's pimp talk. <laughs> Uh, one of my favorites is to run in January, February, have customers buy old inventory and get a free exclusive gift for a loyalty program. So that might make, look like I got an old merch. So this is that old inventory that you got some, you know, some merch or whatever left over mm-hmm. and it ran. And now, now you got to figure out a way to reinvigorate and get it back out there. So you bring back this old thing. And if you buy it, I'm going to offer you something new that also just feels like a bonus. Right. It also kind of goes with like having a fan club. A loyalty program, fan club, you know, which is another way to definitely uh, boost your income. How do you feel about using the word fan club for artists versus maybe, I don't know, just something, right, That that's not specifically that, but it's still kind Why? of... Why? Because it doesn't sound it's, cool? It's, it's a community. Um, so or you can say community. You got to, you know, it's psychological dynamics, yep. right? First of all, if you have your own little culture, like, you know, like... The barbs, you know, so like mm-hmm. Nicki and I got the barbs, you know, right. uh, Beyonce, and it's it's not even something that they created. It's something like that the fans created this word for them sometimes, like That's different. the Beehive. Mm-hmm. So it's like now I got my Beehive membership club, whatever you want to call it, but whatever it is, it's still a fan club. Where it's people cool can when fans in. create it, right? It's but really sometimes, cool. particularly for your demographic, it might be a little bit weirder where some people. You know, some like, people, so if you're a rapper, you don't want to be like, join my fan well, club, well, guys. Just that. Some people's fans aren't comfortable 
identifying themselves as a fan openly because they're too cool. You know, you know right. people that are just too cool. So you might call it a book club. You might have you might have something. Whatever you want to call have. it. You call them your cousins. You know what? Exactly. Call them my cousins. Y'all my fam, right? All that kind of stuff. But it's just some kind of exclusive space to filter out for the people that really care. But I just wanted to say that because, yeah, I mean, it, you have to understand the identity and mindset of your fans. It's, right. it's just like Tyler, the creator, and how his fans boo Drake, right? Right? Yes. Like he's basically been priming that type of fan base for years. Right. Where I want to be, you know, I don't know, anti so much. So, I, and especially when it comes to commercial or just to certain ways of thinking. So, as you might evolve, you might out evolve the fan base you started with because you've grown up and they're still thinking that way. And now it's like, whoa, why are y'all acting like that? Well, it's the monster you created. Now, I'm sure there's some f- fans that were born for some reason that a little, might have been a little bit more justified, but that's kind of the energy. He put out and rep- that's what he represented, right? He he um, attracted people that thought like that, and he also gave permission because he had his own cool factor and mm-hmm. and um, what influence. He actually gave people permission and influence to start being like that if they weren't like that because they thought that was what it took to be cool. Right. So it's something you got to keep in mind for your fan base. Cause this is one artist, man. He has the the type of stuff he was putting out. I was just like. Bro, this is dope conceptually, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But man, I would never want to go to your concert. <laughs> like I know, like you would be attracting creepers, like like legit like creepers and hey, people yeah. that I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be around. But that's you always get what you put out. If you, if you say right. it's gonna be a twerk fest, then you bring in people who are ready for a twerk fest. If you say it's gonna be smooth and adult and grown and sexy, people gonna come in ready to be grown and sexy. If you say it's gonna be funny and fun, like. That's what you have to, you're priming people yeah. to bring the energy that you put out. Yeah, but but like actually going the step to actually create the the club, whatever the your structure. club. Yeah, you know what I mean? To where, you know, it's like people pay to be in your in your fan club. You know what I mean? So you have you can create different tiers. So you can have a lower tier, middle tier, a higher tier. So based on what they pay, they get different things. But this is basically like the loyalty program. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you pay something and then you get all of these exclusive things. So like during the holidays, you're going to get my exclusive holiday merch, you know, or, or you're going to get the first dibs on the new singles or whatever, you know, your thing. It's a long list of things that you can kind of offer people in the fan club. But if you build that fan club, like these are, this is the thing, like this is going back to having that warm, hot audience, right? Because you're building something where a, you control it, Mm -hmm. you know, because people opt in and and you can control the platform, but also B, you have all of these people who actually want the stuff. So when it's time to have new releases, new merchandise, uh, show time, holiday, whatever, you basically sell to these folks first, you know what I mean? And then you can promote to the rest of the world. He has one last one. What do you say? Customer service strategy. Hmm. Assuming you use a 3PL, I don't know what that is, get a storage unit for a month and stock your most popular products. Use it to do returns and exchanges as you get closer to Christmas. Pay the extra few bucks to Overnight or Express. Super easy way to get customers for life. Now, that might not apply directly in how you hear it, but... What the takeaway for that is for me, because essentially he's saying, look, invest in overnighting to your customers because that'll make them a customer for life. Over deliver, find pockets and places that you can over deliver in some way. Mm -hmm. Right. And give them something, a pleasant surprise. And that'll endear them to you even more. So whatever that might look like, even if it seems to be a bad investment on the front end or just might be a little uncomfortable on the front end because you might not have that extra five dollars or whatever dollars. Find ways that you can do things like that, and it will, once again, ingratiate your fan base and hopefully keep them with you longer. Right. And then, I mean, really, that gets into, like, being creative also with your with your product, you know. But that also gets into, like, you understanding uh, your money because doing stuff like that, first of all, having to pay for the inventory up front um, and then housing it uh, – if it's holiday time or a specific time of the year, you're going to be discounting everything. So it cuts into margin. So you kind of have to look at that. And then when you do stuff like that, you have to be specific in your shipping because you don't want to uh, have this price. And then somebody from out of the country 
purchase it and then you have this price you have a shipping price that's greater that's one thing about uh having e-commerce and, and selling products like you got to be real careful when it comes down to uh cutting the profits on your product you have to look at the shipping because it costs way more to ship it out of the country than it does uh to ship it in the country so that's just another thing that you have to take into account when you when you start doing you know stuff like this definitely just another reason why it makes sense to start ahead of time plan right? it out it, it ain't no way around it. it it's not man I, I wish right but the, it's always worth it i'm always people who've been around me a lot over the last few months especially who are doing direct work with me like hear me talk about infrastructure a whole lot mm -hmm. and it sucks in that time period sometimes where it's like yo i'm not seeing a big bump but i'm doing all this work but once it's laid you're prepared to scale up. You're prepared right. to grow. So when stuff happens, sometimes it just goes very easily. It's like, yo, it's just happening, and you don't, I don't know, you don't feel like super pumped up or like uh, um, paranoid or or scary, not running around, but it just happens. But that's because you did it right. You took the time to do it, and it grew. But on the other hand, when stuff starts growing, if you're not ready for it, now it's like, oh snap! Like I gotta, I gotta figure this Man, out. Stress. Like things might go completely wrong. My, this might be my whole career, right? That's that's what things start to look like. You start losing other people's money if you got partners or investors in you, right? Or messing up relationships. All those things come into account when you don't make sure you have that spot. I've, right. I've had that in in different facets of business, right? You try to take on too much, and now certain promises that you already they, made they start fall short. To, yeah they start to fall shorter than where yeah. you would like to get them so even if the people might be like cool you're like ah i really know what i could have done or should have done or i wanted to do or even if they just pad they gave me this grace this time it's like i, I should have never had myself in this position right. i gotta be cognizant and make sure i go about it smarter i like to say set it and forget it right hey you, you, you watch that infomercial or something nah I, you, first of all hey, I, i've been saying that for a long time yeah, that been infomercials from like 95 i, used to I was born okay nah that was i ain't never seen that i ain't never seen that but that's something i always say set it and forget it you take the time to set it up yep. and then you you know schedule whatever needs to be scheduled out and then you can just relax you forget it and not forget it all the way but you can just forget it mm -hmm. and the great thing about like set it, building that foundation is that 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 process is duplicatable like you're going to duplicate the same process pretty much yep. every every time for a new release you pr you pretty much do the same things you know you might attack it a different way depending on what you're releasing like who is going to but like that foundation is literally the same every time so if you mm -hmm. take the time to like really get your foundation set for you know one launch whatever time you're launching you could just just do it again like rinse and repeat it you know what i mean and then that yep. will take the stress down yep. you already know what you got to do you already know how much time it's going to take you to create all these emails and create uh the ad copies and to get your pictures done and videos created and all this you know reach out to influence whatever you got to do you already know the time that it takes to do all of these things so you can get it done set it and then forget it and if you don't believe her a good way to look at it is yeah, even when you, when you talk about <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about artists like let's say the Beyonces or any artist you know, right? Uh, Kanye. Let's just use those names that a lot of people know, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, especially people who are in the industry, industry, you might not pay enough attention to them, or, but they will. People will say this person does this. Like I know he might he must be about to come out with a project because Kanye is back, just doing some wild right. stuff again, right? Getting I'm, in the public eye, right? So. That's a part of his process. It might be things that look different, but there's some core things. Yo, he does right? that every time. Every time. Every time. And he always says it's not for any reason. It's just how he feels. But that's how he flips the people to thinking he's like his, he's authentic. And, but that's a whole other. I'm not even going to get into that. Right? But he's he's great at mm -hmm. psychological branding and getting people to to follow um, for the good, better or worse. But then you look at, look at Beyonce, especially the last five years or something, right? Everybody knows that there's a high level to secrecy, pretty much, of how she drives. It's some mm -hmm. sort, of, it's a surprise or just unexpected in some form or fashion. There's some core planning, right, that goes around how she does it. Right. But there's still these surf surface level things that we can see that are common in all these people. Why? They have their own process, and it's best to have their own process if you want continued success. It doesn't mean 
I got to do exactly how Lady J posts her post or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It just means I might see something that Lady J does that I could figure out how to integrate um, to do one time. I might want to do it or I might actually decide I want to put it in my process, but I need a process. Right. hundred percent. Right. That's a fact. That's a fact. So, I mean, <laughs> I think we covered it. You think like, we covered it? Okay. So, look. This is the end, pretty much. I got to <laughs> throw this thing in here because I forgot to mention it. The Brand Man Beat Battle. Oh, yeah, we got um, a couple of announcements. Check the link in the description. Uh, that's basically a contest that goes a little bit like this. One, watch the video that Corey dropped because he explains the whole thing. I'll put that in the link in the description, too. But we're looking for producers' beats. We're going to do an artist song competition, and we're looking for beats to be in that competition. First, we're like, we're just going to run it for the artist. But then we decided, you know what? Well, why don't we find some producers like and, and do run a competition so they can actually be the beat that gets promoted right throughout the whole artist competition. So if you're a producer, you have dope beats. Check out everything in the link in the description. You it, there's a for over four thousand dollars worth of prizes, so that's cool as well. But overall, if you just want your music out there, we will be getting your music out there. If you have dope beats, I'm gonna sign register. up, register. Oh, you got beats? I mean, I got a song. You got to that's on the artist side. No, see. So only producers the get the pro- money? The producers, there's two competitions. First, we're doing a competition to get beats. Okay. Right? And once we get these beats and we find the winners, there's two versions. Fan vote, which means yes, fans like do that whole process and they will but then there's also submissions for like judges vote, which means it's selected outside of how many followers or how many people you get to like it. Mm-hmm. I encourage you to do both. But we're doing that and once we find the top two, three beats out of that, those people will be the beats that the artists in the song competition have right. to create beats to. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. you can be on that side. That's what I'm saying. I thought you I thought you were talking about the first part. No, nah, no, nah, I want to be on the, 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 the uh, songwriter side. All right. You know, and I want to win. Okay. So, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> Not getting my drift here. <laughs> but check it out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So check that out. Um, that's coming up, and I also have uh, something else coming up January the 4th, which is a Saturday. Um, I'm going to be hosting a workshop here in ATL Shout It, and it's, we're going to be talking about, you know, launching, putting some power behind launching uh, your music. We're going to be going over three key things that a lot of artists need to know and apply. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's three major keys that an artist need to know and apply before you uh, launch your music. We're also going to have some great industry experts like Brandman Sean will be there, uh, but we're going to have some great industry experts uh, that are going to be Uh, Or you're going to be able to talk to them about things related to like branding, marketing, music publishing, music licensing, all of that good stuff there. So that's going to be January 4th um, in Atlanta. It's called the Power Your Launch Workshop. And then January 5th is our second day of turn up. We're going to work hard and then we're going to play hard on January 5th. And that's going to be my birthday party. Okay. And I'm actually... And that's going to be in Atlanta, too. But I'm actually going to uh, run in a contest right now to pick artists. So I'm going to have about six artists performing. So it's your birthday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to talk about this more. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, I have actually I have like uh, four slots open. So I have two slots taken, but I have four slots available. We run in a contest. I'm letting artists submit the music and whatnot. So we're going to be picking like uh, a few artists to perform for my birthday party. You know, you can submit music, but we'll have all of those details in the description box below. All right. It'll be down there. And other than that, this is the Music Mavericks, Mavericks. podcast. We, we got a name, yo. We got to say it like. Oh, oh, we got to say it. We got to say it together like one, two, three. The Music, Music Mavericks, Mavericks podcast. You podcast. Me on the harmony I didn't want to be on. But All right. Right, we'll work on it. <laughs> we'll work we'll on work it. On it. <laughs> Have a good one. See y'all soon.